our next speaker, um, I got to meet several years ago. She is, as I said, Dr. Holly Rodenkrantz is the director of the Israel Medicine Residency Program here in Urbana for UIC, and uh, another comedian as well. <laughs> Oh, no kidding. 
<laughs> so, uh, but not here. I wasn't a marching lion. Anyway, but I worked. I was at Kelly's Baking, and uh, I hated it. I hated children. I hated everything <laughs> about it. Absolutely everything. And I remember I made the kids walk in line by height. I just and they and suddenly they but they haven't control it. And they were just so wild. And then they were, once they and this was sort of a great life lesson because. Uh, it was so overwhelming, I, I didn't know what to do, and I had this job, I had no idea, it, there was no training. And um, I imposed a fair amount of discipline on them, and it, they suddenly, when they it, when I got control of the situation, it actually became fun, and I went back in the second year. Uh, my father, the engineer, is an instrument engineer at Abbott, so I got a wonderful summer job there, and I worked there a few summers also, doing text guy slander, sell some blue on rabbits, so that wasn't particularly inhumane. I actually even worked in maintenance one year. It was wonderful. So it be multidimensional. So those are some of my multidimensional experiences. I attended the University of Illinois at the time called the Abraham Lincoln School of Medicine, 1978 to 1982. And then I did this. That's kind of orange. We have orange tuxedos, okay? Uh, I got very, whoa, a little family. They want to see the tuxedo. <laughs> so when I got married, I was in medical school. I was between my second and third year. Um, and again, Totally no change, cool, right? <laughs> um, but um, just group of ladies, and just so preparing my wedding, I just said to my mother, plan it. You know, you just can't, the, the minutia can't matter. I borrowed the dress. I mean, it was just, you know, and I'll tell you, married, thank God, I'm married 35 years. Anyway, next, um, then I went to, I did my, so I now I'm undergrad in Illinois, um, did my, went to medical school in Illinois, so where else would I be doing residency at University of Illinois? I love the University of Illinois. I love every, I'm so proud to be affiliated with it. So uh, we were at the VA and at the University of Illinois, and I did my residency there. And then, um, the beginning, so I'm an academic internal medicine, I'm in graduate medical education. How did that start? You never know what life is gonna throw at you. So when I was um, finishing my residency, you know, you may want to be an ophthalmologist, you may want to be a surgeon, you know, maybe you want to, I wasn't sure, I love medicine. Um, when I was in medical school, I remember some neurologists where they were in the hallway whispering to each other and they said, consult medicine, they can tune anybody. And I thought, yes, I want to be somebody who can tune anybody. You know, and I just, it was very inspiring. And I thought, and also my residents, they were, they were they, I admired them. So it's funny how we pick our careers. Because then they actually, you know, I, I was like, I have the aptitude in physics and, and uh, um, but I, I enjoyed surgery. I liked all my rotations. But anyway, um, but I did recognize I wanted to work in a teaching setting. I love medical students and residents. I didn't pay for a particular specialty. There was no such thing as a hospitalist in 1985, nor was there family medicine residency, nor there was the emergency uh, room medicine. That just family medicine just started, but there was some of these residencies we had and some of these specialties that we didn't have. There was certainly no hospitalist versus primary care track. No one had heard of that. You were a general internist, you weren't a hospitalist, or you did both if you were. And then I wanted to start a family of some flexibility. So, uh, the, uh, the other thing is I highly admired, we had the fourth year chief residents, and they were very highly regarded. And I was offered, I, and I didn't get to be a chief resident at Illinois, I was very competitive, and, but I did take a fourth year chief resident at Illinois Masonic. So I moved on to Illinois Masonic, where I, and I wanted a year of training, I, had, I wanted another year of training. Um, I, I just love this idea of this transition year, and I became the chief resident, which was the beginning of my um, career in graduate medical education. And somebody told me, did, did I have a fantasy of being a chief resident or becoming graduate medical education? No, but that worked out. And then the niche then was a women's health, because they were sort of figuring out that all the studies had been done just looking at men, and they start women's health was very popular as a niche. And I got hired one night a week to work in sort of, and, you know, you talked about, somebody's talking about your first job. So my first job was in this primary care clinic for women. Um, uh, I don't know what I meant there. Challenges of women. Oh, yes, I did nothing about taking care of women. That's it, because we were at the uh, University of the VA. And I remember we needed a, can I say speculum? So speculum. Um, I'm sure Tiana's going to say that. So we were at the VA, and it was all the veterans, but at that time it was largely a male population of veterans. We rarely, rarely had a female veteran, and we needed to get a public exam or to have a guiding service came across the street from the University of the VA with a speculum on it, like a cushion or anything. It was unbelievable. I knew very little about birth control pills and all that. So that really changed. And I trained, I learned so much on the job, learned about birth control pills and pap smears and public exams and so forth. Um, we were employee physicians, I was part-time, I started the family. I did both inpatient and outpatient, which you know really is unusual now, I usually are in or out. Um, and I began to uh, this channel to balancing home um, child care and work. Now, common thread from 
really 86 on is I was with medical students and residents. So at U of I, at, uh, U of I College of Medicine affiliated site, so we did consistently with medical students in the Sonic. And I um, had medical residents, so with the medical residents. And then I went on to, I had these three children. They were born in this, these clothes and in this. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but uh, so I, I had three children who are now adults. And it's really cool. It's really cool when you can call your child and say, what kind of wine should I, you know, or something like this. And they're very, uh, no a lot more than me about a lot, but mostly they know about how to do the computer. That's the point that I do. Um, like I'll send them a text, are you up? He, he, he couldn't help me. Anyway, so anyway, then I, I moved to St. Francis. Anybody from the, again, from the 847, and then I went to uh, St. Francis Hospital of Edmondson. Um, we moved from the city of the suburbs, we lived in Willamette. Um, and this was great. I went from having this hour long commute to just 20 minutes. Really wonderful. Still bad. My kids are growing up, continue challenging, balancing home and work. And I had a similar job as a women's health setting. Uh, school in organization, common thread, though we have a college of U of I students, we have residents. And then we purchased our practice, and that was a real paradigm shift. It was our taking care of men. That's no longer employed. That's such a learning curve. I didn't have any idea how to run my own practice. Any, I don't know if you guys have your own practice. You have your own. What an education that's. Take finance courses. Take, oh my gosh, I had no idea accounts receivable and the, all the insurance and everything. It was really very challenging. Let me tell you something. Not an, I am not an entrepreneur. Uh, I, it was very, very difficult, but it was a great lesson. Um, we brought our practice to take care of men, so now we have more general private practice. Again, Common Thread was working with medical students and residents. Um, in 2004, I was restless. I remember the Friday afternoon getting a phone call for somebody wanting one more cassette. Don't, you know, I have my sinuses, I want antibiotics, I know my body, I need antibiotics. It's constant, you know. Oh, uh, and I, I was feeling frustrated. So I, was, I want to tell you, these guys love their jobs, okay? I didn't. I went a lot of phases where I didn't. I really want to make that clear. Sometimes your path takes you. I was burnt out in primary care, okay? So I want to make sure. And I decided I needed some change in my life. So what did I do? I went and retook, I didn't, I was certified in medicine to see if I could still handle it. See, I was grandfathered in. And I retook the boards in 2004 and I passed. So that was said, okay, maybe you can still do this. I did some stuff with the mobile medicine game, which was really interesting. But I was so, on the fence, I actually considered leave, uh, leaving clinical medicine for a job back to Abbott again. Um, I actually got a job offer and we are doing safety and pharmacovigilance, and I really considered it. But at the same time, the only, I, sent my, I sent a resume to UIC and I sent a resume to Abbott, and I got an offer at UIC and I accepted that position because I remember I had so much fun as a resident. Just like you said, there's so many things that you guys said that. So we prepared this. I had no new resident. Yes, there was something about it. I thought, I'm going to go back one more time. And let me tell you, the energy, that's, that's so, so great. But that's a typical, that's a typical moment. We're just rounding in the hall and somebody turned around to the picture of us. And um, I was at UIC from 2005 to 2004. What a journey that was. And that's when I really got involved with patients with graduate medical education and residents and medical students. It was my first exposure to using electronic medical records. Um, I was at outpatient clinic and patient adult medicine. But I started to do, I actually got involved in some clinical research, which I had never done before, using electronic medical records. Now this common thread is really blossoming. I'm really involved with internal medicine residents and medicine. I was the site director, I was doing the clinic's recommendation, I was looking about the value and, and all of these your databases where you put in, um, you know, you know, track medical students and residents' uh, progress and promotions. Um, I was doing work at recruitment. I was interviewing for medical schools. I was doing residency mix. And then, um, you know, that, so I did that from about 2010 again. I just, again, I, I like the dark side. You know, these guys love their job. You know, I like the dark side. I, it, was, it was overwhelming. It was, it was so that, again, in about five year, five or six year cycles, I started to think of career. You know, so, um, uh, I was so heavily into clinical medicine. Um, and as primary care physicians, we are just so overwhelmed with increasing paperwork, documentation, time requirements. And my whole life was spent adding notes and going back into the charts after hours. And um, my husband, who's a lawyer, nice guy though, uh, decided to send my retire. And uh, my kids were adults, and I suddenly wanted to get more flexibility in my schedule. And I was sort of ready to move on. Move on. 
And so I decided, I always wanted a job, guys, forgive me for a second, with, I wanted to wear like high heels and pantyhose and carry a briefcase like the ladies on the train, because I always was like schlumping along and, you know, like horrible, and I was always disgusting and people would vomit on me and stuff, and I was like, I want a job where no one throws up or has diarrhea or vomiting and it hurts blood, and I, I just wanted to see what it was like. So, you know, I'd see my husband go to work and he'd go to these posh, you know, offices, and I just wanted, to, I had this fantasy, and this was a great year. I learned so much. I was doing car reviews downtown, and I, I did carry, I, I carry a rolling briefcase. I, I wore high heels one day, and that was it. But I think you could do that. Um, I used a lot of my clinical skills to another patient contact, and I learned so much. I, learned, I never used Outlook before. I used two computer screens. I learned so much about um, observation and, and admissions and, and all the t um, regulatory aspects of medicine. And then I decided, so I lived near, I was going downtown every day, and I would pass National in the woods. And I stopped in there one day, because I'd heard this was a very good, like, local, who's from Chicago area, it's a very nice little, it's a teacher's college, you know, and, and I signed up, I just walked in, and I applied to go, and there, you know, there was a public policy program, and I did that, and that was fantastic. I, it was not a robust degree. I learned more, I learned so much. So I guess being a lifelong learner, being restless, part of my theme is, diversity and, and, and approach, trying to pepper your life and take different journeys. So next. And then my sister sent me a job. Uh, 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 I was so I here I have a master's in public policy working at a creative. I've been doing a paper or more of a desk job. My sister sends me an application. She sends me a notification for a job down in Champaign. And I love Champaign. Okay? My son's down here. And I, and I said, there's no way they never take me. And I just went on, I sent my resume in, and I remember getting, I did a Skype interview, I put on, like, I was wearing jeans, and I put on a blazer, so I said, <laughs> and, you know, I just answer questions, and uh, here's a, the, I'll, I digress one minute, so be careful when you email, so they offered me to come down for a site visit, and I was so excited, my son was down, it was a great school school visit him at Allen Hall, and um, I sent it forward to my husband, I said, trip with a bunch of exclamation points. And then I came home from work and I said, from, and I said did you see my email? I said, no. And I said, oh, shoot, I didn't know this was fun. So I came back to work the next day and it turns out I flew fly. Road trip. <laughs> so I was offered to come down to have this, we'd like to meet you on Dr. Rosa Pence. We'd really have to follow her Skype and we'd really like to meet you on. That road trip was my response. <laughs> so this is not a good way to uh, it's not a professional way to respond to a potential job. And I knew I was doomed, but they were so polite. These nice people, Carl and Fred, they were so polite. They still let me come down. And I, I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I was just so excited. I would never be so professional. I thought I was. But as you can see, I'm excited. Needless to say, um, I got a job. Anyway, but I don't, so we still joked about it. Um, so I'm back. And it has been a, uh, it's just been the time of my life. It's just been a phenomenal personal growth. Um, I do all these things, which is very boring, but it's re recruitment, oversight of education, management of policy, promotion of scholarly activity, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things that are involved with regimen of education. Um, let's see, next. And I, these are my residents, and uh, there's, we, selfies are very important in our program. Um, we travel, we do a lot of, we, we, we have a great time. These are just, these people who mean a great deal to me. Incredible, and I am very, very fond of them. I get mad at them. I get some of them are naughty, but I really love these people and their you know, everything. So I, I hope I, I want to be a lifelong learner. Means a lot to me. I just reset for the boards you know, that I pass. Um, I don't have to, but I think it gives me credibility. I want to see my residents. I sit for the boards, know what you're going through. Let me help you with study, and then um, that's it. I think what's next. I want to continue mentorship. I want to maybe do more policy. I really believe in community service philanthropy. My husband's teaching a course down here. He was my fairly spouse. I was really involved in some climate change stuff. And we're teaching a course together on um, public health and how climate change may impact your health, health care. And I want to remain part of the University of Illinois community. And this is me. I am very happy to hear from you. And not to, in all due respect, with your name, it's, it's your name, first name, Doc. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, so it's Thank not you. just his name. It's first name, Doc. Doc. So, but mine is, uh, I use my Illinois.edu email, I don't check my Carl email enough, but you are all welcome to contact me or call me, and um, I'm very honored to have been here and spoken after these outstanding people, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you.